Cool. So, Security Manager, a uh, little bit of interesting background. Hopefully, I moved from the UK to Wellington about six years ago, so you may spot a British accent. Don't be scared. I'm still a normal person. I do like New Zealand. It's fine. Um, I've been doing web stuff for a while. It's a bit scary. The first website I did was hand coded in HTML1. We've come on a long way from that. Drupal is much better than hand coding. Uh, I've created a secure web coding course that I run at Catalyst, so I do have some idea as to what's going on with secure stuff and uh, web coding and uh, principles, SQL injection, all that type of stuff. Uh, I just don't get into the nitty gritty of doing the coding itself. Uh, right, it's still the morning. Some of you might be a little asleep. I've got a quirky fact for you. Unlike frogs, and that's a nice picture of a frog. So I thought I'd just wake you all up slightly with that. Um, and hopefully it brings a smile to your face. Uh, a repeat of that disclaimer, I'm not a Drupal developer. I am happy to take all sorts of questions, uh, but if you get too much into Drupal itself, I'll have to pass those off to somebody else. Right, so what is my primary interest in Drupal then, and why am I here today? Well, I want to, A, help us create secure websites. Whether it's Drupal or anything else, I like things to be secure. And I want us to build them as secure and to be able to keep them as secure afterwards. It's not very good if you create a great new website for a customer, hand it over, and then you don't touch it for years, and it becomes stale and unloved, and suddenly it gets hacked because you didn't pay any attention to it. Let's keep these things secure as well. Who here has heard of OWASP? Most people in the room. This is good news. I like OWASP. They do a lot of good stuff in the community. They are trying to really promote security for web applications. Um, not so convinced about their logo, um, but hey, it's, it's a logo. Could be a little bit more colourful. Uh, most people uh, will probably know they are fairly famous for producing what they call the OWASP Top 10, which is a set of security vulnerabilities which they see quite often on websites. Um, it's designed such that from 1 to 10, 1 is the most uh, serious, which they see on a regular basis, and 10 is not quite so serious, but it's still big enough that it's in the list. Uh, number one, that's kind of injection, because if you can do that, it's often game over. I'm looking at number nine, using components with known vulnerabilities. Uh, that was from 2013. It got rated at number nine. There's a new version of the top ten, which has come out only this week. I was checking the slides uh, and just sort of following a link, and the link wasn't working. And I checked the Git repository, updated 12 hours ago. So that's very fresh. It's finally come out but it's still number nine, which means we've not got much better at doing it in the, uh, the last four years. Uh, so hopefully we will get better and it can drop off that list of top 10. So their guidance on how to prevent problems with using components with known vulnerabilities can be summarized by these four things. Remove unused features. You know, don't have modules for things you don't need. It seems fairly reasonable, but a default setup can come with quite a few things. And if you share setups between a lot of different sites and customers, you may just have common things in there. If you don't have a feature, it can't be hacked. So that's a nice, easy thing, but that's all in your control. I can't do much about it uh, if you, whether you take it in or out. What I can help you with, hopefully, is the next three. They recommend you actually continuously check to see what versions you've got installed. If you don't know what versions you've got installed, how do you know whether they're up to date? Sounds kind of easy. It's only easy to say. It's much harder to do. Um, the next thing they say is you should actually be monitoring uh, the various internet sources to find out when there is an update available. And you need to monitor for components that have gone out of support. And we do sadly find various modules will effectively become abandoned. Are they still in active development or have the developers stopped paying interest? It does happen sometimes and maybe your project is dependent on some module which is no longer of interest. How can you then persuade the customer actually to keep it secure, we now need to spend time redeveloping from that module to some other groovy new module. But they don't get much extra benefit beyond it's going to still receive security updates. That's kind of a hard sell. But at least if you know about it, you can try and put it into plans. So, some useful things. Drupal has a core update module. It's kind of useful. Um, you can actually go into the admin site and you can see which modules are installed that have updates available. Well, so I'm told. As I say, I'm not a Drupal techie. I've never actually gone and done this myself, but I've seen other people do it, so it must exist. 
I had a quick look at the documentation and it still said hmm this is all the documentation for Drupal 7 it needs a bit of an update to version 8 well I'm still it probably does the job fairly well but that only works if you want to go in and manually check it uh, now to achieve the next bit of those OWASP guides Drupal have security advisories this is great if they didn't tell you there was a new version you really wouldn't know uh, now there's a slight challenge with their uh, security advisories historically they're not very consistently formatted and I'll come on to this a bit later as to why that's a challenge for me if you're just a normal user and you're just looking at the emails that come through you can probably recognize okay this is a module I'm interested in it now says it's unmaintained it now says there's an update whatever it is you can read that you're a human you're clever you can parse complex emails computers are a little bit harder at being that clever uh, so very recently uh, the Drupal security team have managed to get all their advisories available through the API interface so it's now possible to achieve looking at them through a lovely JSON interface and it's much easier to parse and we've been chatting to them for a little while and this is now released so hopefully life will become much easier for parsing these right so that's quite useful but it's still that's very much that's a manual operation you as an individual need to go in and check your site and look at these things I have a desire to help make things easier. So, some centralized monitoring. I'm a security manager, I like to be able to keep my finger on different pulses and easily see whether things are up to date. Uh, Catalyst has been around for a little while now, we're celebrating 20 years, hence the bit at the bottom of the uh, footer. Um, about six, seven years ago, we created a project called Archimedes, which actually seemed to do this particular job. And it was written in Drupal 6. And it was largely successful. It was open sourced. Uh, but we didn't really establish much of a community around it. So there were a few forks in different Git repos, but not too much happened. And then, of course, Drupal 7 came along, and it needed rewriting. And we started to rewrite it in Drupal 7. And then Drupal 8 came along as well, so we looked and needed rewriting again. And at that stage, it got a bit harder. So, we ended up rewriting it, yes. Uh, we've rewritten the main server into Django. Uh, the reason for that was to attempt to decouple it away from Drupal and to make it easier for us to add support for other types of CMS systems in the future, not just Drupal, but other things. So we've completely rewritten it. We've added support for uh, the new Drupal 8 websites, but of course we've still kept the, the legacy Drupal 6. We have some initial starting code for Silverstripe, it's not really been mentioned much in this conference. We are a Drupal conference, but trying to show that actually the problems that we have here with Drupal are the same sort of problems that lots of other people have as well. So where we can try and make life easier, then let's. Uh, so uh, we also then got a bit more carried away with rewriting it and decided rather than using a standard JavaScript, we'd go for a headless approach. So just like in the keynote yesterday, this is going to be a headless website running React.js. Apparently it's the future. Well, it's sort of here now for this little bit. So that's a good start. Uh, unfortunately, it turns out that uh, creating React.js code is actually quite difficult if you don't know what you're doing. So it's taken quite a long time. Uh, but we have now got most stuff there. So it has officially, uh, Matara is being launched uh, this week. Now, you might look at it and think, well, that's a bit of an odd name and why did we change the name? Well, we didn't really promote the old name, we didn't really think about the old name, and somebody else came in and grabbed that namespace. So another project got in on Read the Docs, and out of the various sort of security tools that got released from the CIA and the NSA over the last couple of years, one of them was called Archimedes. And I didn't really feel it was a good idea to have a tool that's designed for defensive security purposes and helping us to be the same name as one that's designed for hacking in for nefarious means by certain governments. So we've changed the name. Now what does Matara mean? Well, it's a word uh, from Tereo, from Maori, and that's the definition according to Maori Dictionary, uh, got co -NZ, vigilance, alertness, watchfulness. Seems like quite a good thing. We've got some sort of system that's keeping an eye on everything for us. We don't necessarily have a good logo yet, but this picture seemed to sum it up. Um, something that's on alert for us. Are they meerkats? Not quite the same thing, but they do a good job of that. 
So, uh, a couple of slides. Um, uh, apologies, there is no practical demo of this. There wasn't really time and I wasn't confident we could get it through. So I've gone for some screenshots instead. Um, so, I've tried to squeeze bits down so as much as possible fits on a screen in a meaningful way. This is uh, from a, a dev server we've got with a bunch of data going in and there's a dashboard. Now the dashboard is really designed to work on a bigger screen than a little sort of small chunk here for a presentation. So you see we've got a bit at the top, that's all your major versions and then further down there's some sort of guide as to how many you're going to have across different versions. Uh, so the idea is if you're not very technical you've got a quick easy view. If you are technical, you can drive into some of the other bits, sites, advisories, etc. So, I have a slide. Now, I didn't want to tell you what the actual names of the websites were, so I had a bit of fun with GIMP and I created that particular obscuring mask. Uh, seemed fun to me, as you do some waves. I never knew GIMP could do that before, but hey, open source is great. So, what that's showing, what you can hopefully see, yes, um, these are all Drupal websites. Well, we know that at the start. Um, but along the top, there is support for other types of platforms. Now, we haven't really implemented any of those yet, but hey, let's be ambitious. We're going to be adding support for all those things, so it will make it easier. We can see what the version number is, and we can also see what the environment is if it's been configured correctly. Now, this only works if you actually configure it. It does make it slightly tricky. Um, we're using the environment module within Drupal. Uh, we have found there's a nasty habit where developers will just sort of clone from one instance to another and, oh, they don't actually change some of these settings. Uh, we even had, at one stage, I think about three websites were all reporting to be the same website. Um, yes, it's very easy to take a developer vagrant box and just clone it across for more purposes. Uh, we have added a big decommissioned button there and all of those say false. Well, that's because technically within this system, we've not yet added the ability to set the flag to say they're decommissioned, but what we do have is a lot of old data. Um, uh, this is mostly receiving data by email, uh, because that allows you to actually receive the data uh, usually through almost any firewall combination. So it can monitor not just on your normal website infrastructure, but if you've got a Drupal site that's hidden inside a customer's uh, intranet, running somewhere and you may not have great network connectivity to it, you're not allowed to talk out through the proxy, you're almost always allowed to send emails out. So that was the first thing we supported, adding a more conventional HTTPS endpoint, more popular, but we added that one slightly later because it seemed a secondary need, but definitely one that everyone will want. Um, uh, so, yeah, a lot of old data. Uh, it will be decommissioned properly, or rather, I hope these sites will be. But one of the things this did show is we actually have a lot of sites still running on people's vagrant boxes, on sort of staging servers, where they never really got turned off. They didn't actually get properly decommissioned. The customer went on from one phase of the project to another, and we just left it there ready for when we go back. Now, it's okay when it's an internal box, but what happens when it's a staging external box and the customer really does still want to be able to look at it periodically? we actually should still be paying attention to keeping those versions up to date as well or turning them off when not needed. Uh, so we've got lots of sites. Um, we've got lots of advisories as well. Drupal does have a lot of security advisories. Now that's partly because there's a lot of different modules. Uh, and the far right column uh, is the status, which unfortunately is mostly saying parsing failed. And that's because of the sheer variety which they've had. Mostly we've been consistent. But if you uh, look at just the version numbers, 2017, that's a good start. We know the year, that's when they're all coming out. They can't even work out whether to left pad with a zero to get to three digits. Now, when they're that bad, that bit, just think what's going on further in, whether they actually put information for this field or that one, and how they misformat stuff. So I'm really hoping the new JSON feed is going to make life so much easier, and we'll get that working fairly soon. Um, and what we've got, once it's uh, completed parsing, it then goes into a state that says needs review. Because you actually want to have somebody periodically going in and checking to see, right, does this vulnerability apply to me? Do I need to do anything about it? Yes, it might be something which is installed on your site, which is great, but do I need to care about it? 
Uh, it might be functionality that only applies after you log in, and the only people who can log in are you. Well, it's probably a lower risk than some of the external facing functionality where you've really got to be external and um, fixing it much faster. Some of the advisories will give you a CVSS score. That's uh, a simple way at not to 10 to indicate how severe it is. That's the green bar. So it's trying to indicate more or less how severe it is. Um, you can see on the next slide, this is much older. This is from a couple of years ago. We've successfully parsed all of those. And we've got a fairly good idea which ones need attention. Uh, for those who can sit down the bottom, second from bottom, sequel injection, that won't surprise, that one needed pretty urgent attention. And being older, we have managed to parse all those successfully. So it's great, we've now got a list of sites, we've now got a list of modules, sorry, we've got a list of advisories, we need to tie them together, we need a list of modules. So we have those as well. Uh, this is just the sort of top 10 rows that it's pulled out of uh, Drupal. Uh, there's an idea here from Drupal itself as to whether or not these are actively developed. Are they being maintained or not? You'll be able to go through and say, oh, actually, this module is no longer being maintained. That's the information you can have coming through. So you can look at all this manually at the moment, but it can be a little bit harder. So that way, we can now go through, new vulnerability comes along, I click on it, and I can see how many of my sites are affected by it. I can go in, I can look at all of those quickly, and as I go and fix them, that number will gradually come down. Um, the bits you didn't see further down on the dashboard, um, there's designed to be a list of sort of the latest 10 vulnerabilities, which will show you how many of them you've got. Um, you know, it's quite useful, that's a quick visual display, new stuff's come along, how much do I need to pay attention to it? So, next steps. I'd really like us all to carry on playing, that was one of the, the other talks, it's open source. We need to actually just have some fun and do stuff and help each other out. I'd like to try and develop a bit of a community because that way I can find out what requirements you guys have. I've got a set myself. I know what I'd like us to be doing. But you guys may well think of other things. We have a lot of creative people here, not just a couple of people. Uh, the code is now up on GitLab. Very recent. Yesterday. <laughs> uh, was it just take? <laughs> Um, so there's two different ones. Uh, the Drupal module actually has uh, three different branches for 6, 7, and 8, and you need to check out the code from the relevant one. I thought I'd successfully pushed everything up, and then at about half ten last night realised, oh, the other branches are not there. Okay, quickly fix that one before I come in this morning. Uh, we are hoping to get this pushed back in as a formal Drupal project uh, in the not-too-distant not future, but first of all, was getting the code out there. I am on Twitter. I'm a bit of a Twitter newbie, I don't do too much with it, uh, so you won't see too many posts, but I can receive stuff that way, uh, there will be some discussions, I have an email address as well, uh, you are welcome to contact me, uh, and we can try and help uh, put together a community. Now, I've got a couple of slightly related bits to show for those people who haven't come across this other thing. Um, okay, so there are various other tools out there which can help us figure out whether our websites are secure. Uh, there is a link from uh, Matara on the, uh, the site's view to security check. You probably didn't see it, it was hiding on the far right. It takes you out to this observatory where, uh, site by Mozilla, which will run a bunch of scans across your website to be able to tell you uh, standard things like, do you have a content security policy defined? Uh, now, this was uh, the Drupal South website, uh, Drupal South, uh, .drupal.org. Now that's quite important because I'll just explain in a moment. And we've got a B, which is not bad. Uh, and if I scroll down, you can see we got uh, a cross there for content security policy. Wasn't quite right. It uh, contained some stuff. And we've got most other stuff is good ticks except for the cross site scripting protection. So mostly not bad and lots of good information. And this is quite a useful site. But now come across, this is a D. Plus. This is much lower. This is Drupal South website again, but now it's, hmm, drupal.org.nz should be the same website. Something's gone wrong here. We are actually still advertising the same site, but it's configured differently. This is a great tool you as creators, developers, uh, owners of Drupal sites can use this tool to get a quick rating. So can your customers and their users. So 
you know, customers eventually will become far more on the ball at looking at these things and actually saying, why do we not have an A? Uh, the tool also wraps standard uh, SSL checkers and third-party things like SSL labs. So it's a good, quick way of being able to get to a simple profile of everything. So that's really what I wanted to cover today was uh, to announce Matara, uh, to try and explain, yes, we do need to be looking after keeping these things up to date. Um, and this is another website that I'm not affiliated to at all, but just seemed like some really useful uh, open source code to just check to see whether or not your site is up to date with all those latest security headers. And some of these things do change over time. A new one came along only a few months ago that I spotted was added. I don't think we've got direct time for questions now because no, we've got another talk. Out of time. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so I will be around in the break after this and for the rest of the day around the conference. Um, really, I'm happy to chat to anybody who comes along and uh, wants to chat or by electronic communications later. Thank you.